It's Mark Zickery, Mr. Sci-Fi, also known as Mark Zickery of Space Command. And I'm back from WonderCon where I was uh, hanging out with my brother Wizards, Kevin Anderson, Len Wein, many others, talking about Space Command, laying track. Uh, we're also editing the movie, uh, talking to a lot of visual effects people and monster makers for the second film, Creature Makers. And uh, it's been an amazing time. I'm writing the Making of Space Command book. But that is not what I'm here to talk about today. I'm here to talk about two films, uh, one of which was released on Blu-ray last week, the other of which I revisited and read the novel that it was based upon. We're talking Interstellar and Contact. And in many ways, these, these films are extremely similar uh, in their ambitions and their intent, and the fact that they both have Matthew McConaughey in them, who has aged very well, I must say. And uh, Contact was written by uh, Carl Sagan. The novel was written by Carl Sagan, the late and great uh, astrophysicist and uh, scientist who uh, did the show Cosmos and was a great popularizer of, of science. And uh, <clears throat> the, the book was a bestseller. It was made into a film by Robert Zemeckis, starring Jodie Foster, who was a big movie star at the time. And, uh, and it starred a newcomer named Matthew McConaughey as uh, someone of religious faith. And, uh, and, of course, he stars in Interstellar now. And the way these two films are similar is they're not great movies, uh, depending on one's point of view, but they are earnest films. And they're about characters who have their heart on their sleeve and who are looking for love and human connection and looking for their answers in the cosmos. And they go through basically a wormhole to a distant part of the universe and... Uh, find their answers there. And um, so uh, you know, I, I reread the novel of Contact, and I watched the movie a few days ago, and I've been watching Interstellar uh, on Blu-ray. And uh, first of all, the, you know, in certain ways, they're, they're, they're basically the same movie. They're not great films, but they are well-intentioned and ambitious. And, uh, and once you know the plots and the, and, the, and the limitations of their plots, they're actually very entertaining. What I would say about Interstellar in particular is that, like Prometheus, another very ambitious science fiction film that perhaps doesn't achieve all that it sets out to achieve, uh, the making of featurette, featurettes on the DVD, on the Blu-ray, are just uh, terrific, just fascinating. And the logistics of how Interstellar was made are uh, a wonder to behold. For instance, the, uh, the spaceship set, uh, which uh, involves centrifugal force uh, generating artificial gravity in the film, it was 160 feet long, and they built it on a, uh, a, a, a cradle that could tilt and angle and, and move. And then they built a spaceship that was on a gimbal, and they, they shipped the spaceship, uh, seven tons of it, to uh, Iceland for, for part of the shoot, uh, dropped it into the water on a crane. I mean, just amazing, amazing logistics. Additionally, uh, in the spaceship set, because it could angle and twist and turn, they also had... Uh, through the windows, the astronauts could actually see the actors as the astronauts could actually see what they were supposed to be looking at. So through uh, through rear projection and, and, and cycloramas and all sorts of stuff. So amazing um, uh, cinematic trickery, a, a great deal of inventiveness that in some cases was probably more effective for the actors than for the viewers. And and uh, model work and full size models for a lot of the uh, the effects stuff. Um, just really. Really incredible. So I, I highly recommend the making up featurettes on Interstellar. Um, beyond that, they also talked to Kip Thorne. Uh, if you buy the the disc at uh, Best Buy, the Blu-ray Blu-ray at Best Buy, it has an extra making up featurette. Uh, the physics are actually fascinating in both Contact and um, uh, Interstellar because we're dealing with black holes and folded space and space time. Uh, in particular, the uh, uh, in both films you have characters uh, where their their experience of time is different from people back on Earth. Um, and, and, and of course, in uh, Interstellar, people age rapidly on Earth while they age much less so during the mission. So um, it's, it's, it's fascinating stuff if you're a science geek, as I am. But, um, but then it goes, you know, <laughs> off the rails a bit toward the end. Uh, in both films, there's that thing of, of, of it going into very strange terrain. Uh, I mean, aliens and contact send information on how to build a device to transport Jodie Foster across the galaxy. And in the book, it's actually a team of uh, scientists, not just, not just Jodie Foster's character. And then it all takes place in the wink of an eye, and no one believes her or them in the book. And uh, it, it's just very strange. And also, the aliens appear as lost loved ones, uh, dead loved ones, in, in Jodie Foster's case, her, her father, uh, to them. Now, it's very interesting that that story beat was previously explored 
by Ray Bradbury in uh, the classic story, Mars is Heaven. And in that story, it makes a lot more sense because aliens are impersonating the dead, lo lost loved ones of the astronauts to lower their guard and then kill them. Whereas, you know, in, the, in, in contact in both the novel and and the, the movie, Jodie Foster is just, you know, amazed and, and, and moved and, uh, and it's as though she's seeing her father again, though she knows that it's an alien in disguise, but she still acts like it's her loving father, doesn't run screaming as I think many people would do in real life. Uh, but uh, but it, it's, it gets a little, you know, wonky. And, uh, and then in Interstellar, of course, uh, you have uh, the, this, uh, this sort of uh, infinite bookcase that Matthew McConaughey ends up in, which again is a little dicey but um but so but again I, you know I, I i really applaud the filmmakers for trying to look at why we're here what the universe is trying to expand our understanding of physics because uh it really has been a fascinating scientific history in the fact that up until newton you know science when science explained things it was sort of like oh, okay for every action there's a reaction we can observe that gravity it drops something it falls okay we can observe that the 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 physics that were being be given to us were um, in accord with with the world as we observed it. Then, of course, we get Einstein, and he says, "Well, you know, depending on how fast you're going, that depend it tells you how time moves, and space time are all one thing, and there's the bending of space, and all of a sudden, it's no longer what we're observing. It's a whole list of very interesting and very um, counterintuitive rules of the universe, which tur turned out, of course, to be true. But and of course, now we have black black." Um, black matter and all sort dark matter and all sorts of things that are we have no idea what they are and uh, I think that's terrific I think it's great having a universe with mysteries but uh, but the fact that these films attempt to um, explore these things is laudable and I guess I guess what I'm saying in my in my little ramble here is that I, I applaud a film even if a film fails if it's trying if it's ambitious if it's aiming high if it's trying to do something different I hugely applaud that and I would much rather have films like Interstellar than, you know, films of far less ambition that succeed on their lower ambition but don't bring us anything new or fresh or stuff that we can chew on. And one thing about Interstellar that also is fascinating is that my friends who have daughters love the movie because it's about a man's relationship to his daughter. They totally went for it hook, line, and sinker, whereas a lot of my friends who don't have kids really didn't like the film at all. And as, as I've said before, I, I'm, I'm more in the middle, but... Uh, but still, it's, it's, it's great to be able to observe how these films were, were made, Interstellar in particular. And uh, there's, a, there's an Honest Trailers uh, piece on Interstellar that I might see if I can put up on Mr. Sci-Fi because it really goes into some of the, <laughs> the interesting weaknesses of the film. But, uh, but again, I urge you to look at the making of featurettes uh, on, on Interstellar. They're fascinating, just fascinating. And, uh, and I think the whole trend now toward practicals, toward toward doing things uh, in a different way, building full-size spaceships, just like J.J. did on Star Wars, is a, is a really interesting trend, and one I'm leaning toward more and more myself in, in the films that I'll be doing. So, so that's about it for now, and uh, again, thanks for, uh, for checking out Mr. Sci-Fi, for watching Mr. Sci-Fi, for, for uh, spreading the word. And again, with Mr. Sci-Fi, we are trying to get more uh, li listeners, viewers, etc., so if you can contact a friend and say, hey, check this out, that'd be much appreciated. And if there are subjects you want me to, to uh, take on in Mr. Sci-Fi, I'm very glad to do that. And so this is Mark Zikri, Mr. Sci-Fi, Mark Zikri of Space Command, signing off. We will talk again very, very soon.